to our virtual Saturday stories, the first of 2024. Happy New Year to you all. And it's a wonderful kickoff this month with um, amazing four-time Caldecott award-winning illustrator, Brian Collier. And so he's joining us from his Hudson Valley studio this morning, and he's going to be sharing an amazing behind the scenes of how he does his stunning watercolor collages. Um, this is the style that he has done his books in, in more recent years. And this book, we have this one featured as well as um, uh, Love is Loud. We have two pieces in our original art show. Uh, this is at the Society of Illustrators in Manhattan. So if you are visiting the city, please do go and see the show. Um, it's been up since end of October and uh, the show actually ends at the end of this month on January 27th. But I encourage you to see um, the works of Brian Collier in person because collage is something very dramatic, very vibrant, very eye-catching or inspiring. It's completely um, another dimension from how it's seen in the book. Although if you look carefully, you can see the depth in the illustrations as well. Um, but to see it in person, it's a true work of art. And Brian's work is featured in museums and galleries throughout the United States. Um, so we're, we're really honored to have you this morning, Brian. And I just tell a little bit more about you. Um, Brian was born in Maryland and he's one of six children. And he actually got a scholarship to go to Pratt Art School, the Pratt Institute of Art in New York City. Um, and his talents grew from there. And really his whole uh, career as a professional illustrator started pretty quickly, although he did have to pound the pavement. It took him seven years to get published and his first book uh, won an, I think it was an Ezra Keats Award. Oh, correct. Ezra Jack Keats. Yeah, yes, two awards. And that was for Uptown, correct? That was your first book? Yeah, and um, the Coretta Scott King Award. Yeah, and the Coretta Scott King Award. So he started and um, just like launched <laughs> like a yes. rock straight into the industry. And we just counted, it's been about 50 books that he's had published. And every year there's a couple that come out. So that's a lot of work. Um, it's amazing because the amount of um, uh, art that goes into his illustrations uh, you'd think would take a lot longer, but he seems to be able to prolifically produce these amazingly thought through illustrations that have so much in them. And we're going to find out much more about that. I'm so excited to be talking more to Brian this morning. You're going to learn so much. It's very, very inspiring. I and mean, I've got all my notes because I want to delve into more during the uh, workshop portion. Um, but one of the things I wanted to mention is a couple of inspirations that Brian had as a child, because some of you who are participating this morning, you're either repeat um, visitors to the program and welcome back, or if you're new, welcome. We hope you join every month and meet somebody new in the illustration field. But this morning, um, one of the things that's really inspiring uh, is that um, Brian's grandmother was a quilter. And quilting is storytelling with fabric. And so seeing these quilts really was sort of absorbed by Brian as a child. And um, I think one of the things that I, I read that you had mentioned, which was really beautiful, um, was that she, where did I put that little note? Because I've got some really good notes here. Um, so, so not only was she um, an influence and inspiration, but she planted a silent gift, which I thought was so lovely. Yes, because sometimes you're surrounded by things, you never know what's going to um, move you or uh, stay with you. And as an adult, he's really um, discovered this uh, collaging form and it does have a sort of quilting feel. Um, and also it's two books that were very inspiring to Brian as a child. Uh, were the um, two books that I thought were very good and inspiring to lots of people. Snowy Day um, and also, uh, what was it, Purple Crayon? Um, Harold, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Yeah, Ezra Jack Keats' book, Snowy Day, which features a, a little black child, gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations. And you, you said this was a book that you related to because you finally saw a book that represented you as a child. And uh, Harold and the Purple Crayon, well, Harold could really be representing anybody because he's a little boy drawn in um, in purple crayon and he's more silhouetted, but it's more what he can do with that crayon. It's very exciting. I, I, I love that book too. Um, 
Right, so I want to just turn over the programme to Brian this morning. We'll talk more. Don't forget to get your materials ready to do some draw-alongs. Um, do send in any illustrations that you do, any drawings. We'd love to see them. I'll share them with Brian. He'd be very delighted to see what you've produced this morning. Um, my email is going to be put in the chat by Tim, who's behind the scenes. Also check out uh, Brian's website, which we'll put in the chat as well. You'll see all the titles. His books are amazing. There are so many biographies, so many uh, award-winning books. Um, and it's like a library of learning about people throughout history, particularly Black history, um, amazing contributors to um, our grand web of unbelievable um, inspiring artists and uh, all kinds of people in the world. Um, this book is also a celebration of that, a joyful celebration of uh, people who've left legacy throughout history. Um, and there's more to tell. I will uh, definitely be talking more with Brian about details, but please um, uh, welcome Brian this morning and over to you, Brian. Thank okay. You. Hey, hello, everyone. I can hear your, your hand, your claps and your applause. It sounds great. <laughs> it's good to be here with you. I'm always excited about talking about art and, and talking about picture books and, and then talking about who I'm celebrating and because I'm a, it's a celebration and a testimony to you as the reader uh, and your development. So this is a, what a wonderful day. And I wanna touch back on the Harold and the Purple Crayon. Now, when I got Harold, this book, I had an Afro. <laughs> but since I've gotten older, I look more, look more like, it now. <laughs> like Harold now. That's what, oh, you can never outgrow a picture book. You, you can't do it. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So that's what I love about storytelling. You, you turn into the character. And this yeah. resonates with me on so, so many different levels. And um, I just want to touch, if I could just share with you something in the book, how Harold, when he went for a walk with the purple crayon and he drew a pathway to walk on and he drew perspective and he went for that walk. You know, I, I love that he, he hung the moon in the sky and it, it was wonderful. And he got bored. We all get bored. And he said, I'm going to walk a different way. So he steps off the page and, and walks a different way. And then he stops. And he said, this is a great place for a forest. And in my forest, I'll draw one tree. And he starts to draw the tree. You see how ideas just start to happen. Look at the moon and follow them all the way through. You know, and he said, I'm going to draw a dragon to guard my forest. He drew it with big eyes and big teeth. And then he got scared. He looked at it and it frightened him. <laughs> oh, this is magical storytelling. And he stumbled backwards with the crayon, but look at the crayon and made waves. I bet you can't guess what happened next. <laughs> I bet. Oh, Harold fell in the ocean. And then I bet you can't guess what happened next. He, he drew a boat and a sail and he sailed on. Oh my God, I, could, I, could, I can't get over that magic. You know, yeah. from one page to the next, it just keeps happening. And then, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just amazing. And then he said at a certain point in the book, he said, I need to see further down the road. So he drew a mountain and he climbed the mountain and he looked over, but then he lost his balance and he fell with the crayon in midair. What would you do? You got the crayon, you're falling in midair. Guess what Harold did? He drew a hot air balloon oh. in a basket and he floated down. Now I'll put a pin in that. Over 25 years later, I became an artist and made a book called Trombone Shorty. And in the book, in Trombone Shorty, he, he was in a hot air balloon. And he went from Harlem to New Orleans to Paris and back playing his music. That's no accident because I can't outgrow a picture book. The images stay with you and they pop up at certain times. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the power. That's the power. It'll never let you go. It will never let you go. And that's why I'm enthralled and, and amazed about storytelling and picture books in general because there is no limit. There is yep. absolutely no bottom to this. It, all, it just keeps going on and on and on. And I'm just enjoying the different facets and 
different ways to tell stories visually. And today we're gonna to talk about we are here and we're gonna talk about the process and what I tried to express in this story written by Tammy Charles, who's so awesome. I love working with her. We do, we, we've done two books. Um, All Because You Matter was the first book. Yep, All Because You Matter. Yeah. All Because You Matter and We Are Here. And the third installment that I'm doing just started now is called United Together. Now, when you put those titles together, it says, All Because You Matter, We Are Here, United Together. That's what, that's the trilogy. And oh, I'm super excited about it. And it's taking me in places and making me think about so many different ideas about the importance of the contributions of both black and brown people, as well as how it affects the whole world. And then how we are all together. We are not united, all of us. We're all connected. Nowhere on the yes. planet can you be disconnected. You are connected with everything on the planet and it all matters. So yeah. that's the, um, the joy and the challenge with um, telling stories. Now, yeah. I know you can raise your hand and let me see if you um, have ever painted in watercolor before. I okay, have. I see some hands <laughs> and you know what a collage is, right? You, you know, piecing things together to make something brand new a whole. You, I'm sure you, I see your hands, you're making, you made collage. Well, think about combining those two aspects, watercolor and collage, and look at all the surprise that'll happen when, when you start doing it. There's no end to that either, yeah. you know? And I use simple materials, I use glue, watercolor paper, watercolor paint. And mm -hmm. I use an X-Acto knife. Don't you use one. You use scissors, but I use an X-Acto knife. It's a, it's, a, it's a funny little instrument, but it can be dangerous. So I, I cut my stuff and, and piece it up. But here's how I start. The ideas come in my head and I'll take an ink pen and I'll do little sketches. It's called my storyboard. Can I show it to you? Good, good. I'm glad you would. So I'll do little little drawings in ink. And I just sketch out, I don't know who the character actually looks like, I'll just draw, draw the figure. And I'll just start doing these little sketches. And uh, did you see up top the page number? Page oh, yeah. eight and nine. So I'll sort of figure out how to tell the story like that. And I'll put this, I'll put it together and I'll draw the characters. And I'll think about, you know, um, what they're wearing. I'll make that decision based on reading the text, what kind of clothes they're wearing, what year is it happening in, is it indoor, is it outdoor? As an artist, you're in control, this is your world. You don't have to ask permission about anything. You create your world, you're in power, you know? So, you know, really use your power to tell the story, you know? And I'll do a bunch, do the whole storyboard. And once, I talk with the editor, the art director, because it's a team, I am not here. I know I work alone, but in terms of decision-making as when you're making a book, there's a whole group of, there's a whole team of people that we discuss ideas. And in order for the, the book or the project to go forward, everybody involved has, has to touch and agree yeah. the pathway to make this story. Yeah. That was the most astound, astounding thing that I experienced when I first started making books. I happened to go to the publishing house while they were discussing my book, and it was 30 people around the table. Oh, and I had my storyboard, and I showed them, this is the direction I'm going in. 29 agreed. But then one said, wait a minute, what about, oh, we got to back up, and we got to get everybody in this game. <laughs> that was like, what is this? I got 29. I'm good. Exactly. Way beyond the... Yeah. What's the odds? I said, no, we need all 30. All 30 has to do this. Mm. So that's when you, you work out ideas. And what I'm hopeful when I'm going into meetings and thinking about that is that, that somebody comes up with an idea even greater than mine to make the book even better. Mm -hmm. So even though I come in and I'm confident, I said, I got it. I got it. I got it. Story. I hope somebody says, oh, wait a minute. What about this? And mm -hmm. it blows, it takes it to another level. That's yeah. what I'm hoping for. I'm praying for that, you know, yeah. because as an artist, you're desperate for ideas to, to work and 
because when it's right, it's right. And in a picture book, everything can be right. But if there's one little thing that's a problem, it blares out at you like a, like a, a neon light. You got to correct it because if it's wrong now, 30 years from now, it will be wrong. You know, so, so, you know, get it all out. Get it all with your wish list, your bucket list. Get it all out. Empty, yes. empty your cup. Yes. So that's the energy and excitement that I go into making books. No matter how many books I've made, none of them can help you when you're working on the book in front of you. None mm-hmm. of that stuff you did yesterday can help you. You know, you got to come with fresh ideas and fresh eyes and fresh, uh, a fresh spirit that has to fall on this work. And that's what I try to come with. You know, I'm brand new when I'm doing the books because I, I, I want you to experience the very best of me because you deserve it. You don't deserve anything less. You don't deserve me saying, well, you know, I wasn't feeling that well that day. You know, so I just, I just, I phoned it in. No, 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 you, you don't deserve that. You deserve me coming with all, everything, all the blessings. That's what you deserve. And that's what I'm coming with, you know, so. You certainly do, Brian. And you've been- I am excited by that. Okay, now let's move it along. So uh, I've done the storyboard and then I'll do a photo shoot of, I look for my characters. I look for them in my daughters, my kids' schools. I look for them at, for my daughters. They pose for the book, for this book we're talking about today, We Are Here. That's my youngest daughter, Ava. She posed for the book and she's posed for a lot of the books. It's where, I have three daughters. They all have been in the book. They've grown up in, in the books. And, but I picked them because I think their, their personality and their, their body stature and body gestures dictate that, you know? Mm-hmm. And if I see somebody else that I think fits better, I'll get, I'll get them. And that process is only me contacting the teacher and then their parents and their family. And we all sit down and talk about the project. And if they agree or they're comfortable with it, then we go for it. And when I talk to the family, I'm hoping the other family members want to be in it as well because I want their whole family. Oh, what so, so that's what I, and, and there was a book I did and this kid, um, actually the boy that posed for the trombone shorty book, he had a little brother that wanted to be in the book so bad. He, we were doing the photo shoot. He was dancing around. He would jump into the shot. He, he just terribly wanted to be in it so bad. And I waited to the last minute. I said, okay, we're going to put him in. I'm going to put him in it. And he's in the book, you know? And, um, so it's, so I know that it's, it's really important that everybody gets into the book because it's amazing. What an amazing, um, thing to be in like there's a this is an Ezra Jack Keats book that I love too Whistle for Willie oh Whistle for Willie yes and this is the same kid Peter he grew up a little bit in this book and um what I loved about this was because Peter and I looked alike when we were four years old you know um so when I got the books by Ezra Jack Keats it just resonated with me and it was and I didn't at the time I didn't nobody told me this was collage but it just happened to be Mm-hmm. And it has just influenced me in so many different ways. You know, mm-hmm. even I've done books with a little boy wearing a hat just like that in a book, um, a book called Knock Knock, the boys. I put the hat on. He was in the mirror just like Peter. So you can't outgrow a picture book, boys and girls. I don't, you could win four Caldecott honors, but you still can't outgrow a picture book. No. Or you can you can win the as a, you know, New York Times bestseller, or you can win um the Coretta Scott King Award nine nine times, you still can't outgrow a picture book. True. It's amazing. Yeah. You could be my age and it's still hanging with you. Yeah. That's it, that's powerful stuff. And you have the power to make your own book. Influence people all over the world, all over the planet. It's a powerful gift that you and I have. And we have a responsibility to tell our stories. Don't yeah. hold it in and keep it to yourself. That I need to hear your story as well. So, so here's what I did after the storyboard. I'll do sketches on watercolor paper and pencil sketches. I'll take a picture of the person and I'll do sketches and then I'll paint in watercolor. I'll do washes. They call it like so. I'll put down color. You know, mm-hmm. and and then. After I, I do that, I'll collage in part of it. And sometimes the work is just, there's, there's pieces, like this one. 
Can you see that? Yes. That's Can my I... daughter. It's just a, yeah. it's a cutter. I would cut her out, cut it out, and create a background and put her on top. This book is called Hey Black Child. The yes, I girl. read that. That's beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous. And that's my my middle child. Her name's Chloe. She's in the book. Oh. You know, so I, I do. It's it's bits and pieces. This one is from. Um, they didn't make the book. This is the book, um, All Because You Matter, the same little boy, Tammy's son, Tammy mm -hmm. Charles's little boy's son that posed for the book. This one, I, done, I do more art than the book, than required for the book. And then we I edit wondered. down, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. so we have fun with, uh, with creating like that. So here's one more piece from a book I did called By and By. And it's, it's daunting when you have a lot of different people. Like this is a choir. Yes. And so you have a lot of stuff going on, but I totally enjoy it because I try to give everybody their own personality and a facial expression. And then that organ that the, the, the man is playing, all those little keys and- and oh, yeah, so much and, you know, so, so it, it, it's, There's a lot of little details that happen. Were, was each person individually painted and cut out, or did you do a group um, illustration? Well, I did a group thing, like a yeah. section, and yeah. piece, piece it together. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece. I love that. Yeah. Love the perspective of it. Yeah. And those pieces, um, it takes normally seven to 10 days to do each piece of artwork. And it takes me four to six months to complete a whole book. And that, in that four to six months, that means sometimes I have to get on a plane and travel to locations to yeah. see whatever subject matter we're talking about. I want to see it up close mm -hmm. because you get a whole different feel for it yeah. when you see it up close. And uh, like this book, By and By, I w it was about um, the the minister that wrote the, the song, We Shall Overcome. Yes. Yeah. Now the backstory for this one is he was born 25 minutes from my childhood home. Oh, wow. In Maryland. I, I know his daughters. Oh gosh, that's you know, but I went to the church that he built in Philadelphia. He built a, a mini cathedral and they had 1500 chairs on the bottom floor. Look at those chairs wow. in the background. Wow. I had to figure out how to make a sea of chairs, wooden chairs. They were all handmade, mm -hmm. wow. you know? So in storytelling and visual storytelling, you got to figure out how to tell that story to give the impact, to get an impact in the story. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's part of the challenge of making books, yeah. but it's also, it's part of the glory as well. Like my wife is a teacher and this is one of her students oh. that posed for the book. She had no idea that she wanted to be in the book until I came to the class and I saw her and I said, that's the character. That's the, that's character. the one I want in the book. Oh, how and, exciting. Um, and she posed for the book. And now she must have graduated from high school. But oh. you see, the book is still around. Yes. Oh, and it depicts her childhood. Oh, yes. what a what an amazing feeling to be in a picture book and grow up and see yourself when you were a kid. That's yes. a that's amazing. Yes. You know, and um I am so uh thrilled and happy to be a part of that kind of um, you know, situation where I can make that happen. And particularly with your style, Brian, because you obviously paint people beautifully and realistically, but with your own flair and illustrative style, but it's them, it's a portrait, but done in such a dynamic, amazing way. You know, the choices Thank of the you. clothing and the hairstyles and the posing, it's dynamic. It's not just a straight on portrait, it's got story and energy and oh, incredible. Yeah, and I love their little body gestures that they just do. and. Yeah. Also, the light that falls on their faces is a character as well, because that light is important because sometimes it's dimmer, sometimes it's a strong light falling, a presence, because I want, you know, the reader to see the glow, the, the inner light of the child. Yes. So yes. that's all a part of it as well. That's, that's part of the character of it. So uh, I stress that a lot in the, in the imagery to see that light, because that's important. Because yeah. there are we are that's that's what we're bringing to the world. We're bringing light to the world. So um, we already have a lovely comment. I just want to share with you, Brian. 
Okay. Um, so Teresa, who joins quite frequently, she says, this is absolutely beautiful work. So inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> so don't oh, forget to ask questions. But yes, I just wanted to let you know, it's already being majorly enjoyed and people will start making comments, but we're all listening with wide open ears. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're all here. I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased that we're all doing this today. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm always, I'm always super excited about talking about uh, picture books and the book today written by Tammy Charles, We Are Here, is a celebration of to tell all the children, look, you've con contributed to this world. We put great things, great ideas, great spiritual movements into the world. There's no need to look around to guess about your place on this planet. You know, it's been, it's, it's there. Here's the ground, here's the, here's the ground plan that's laid before you, of people that have come before you, that yeah. have put stuff in the world, and they look just like you. And, um, and it's a gift to everyone. Yeah. No one is excluded from it. It's, it just falls upon us like a blessing. So, it's called We Are Here. And, and yeah. you can see how um, her pom-poms are one way here, but when, she, when it crosses over into that starry night, um, the stars yeah. show up in her pom-poms as well. Yeah. It's as if she's carrying the universe. So all those ideas, even though it's not spoken in the text, I tried to bring them visually into the... Um, visually into the text to espouse upon them. Yeah. And one more, one more, just one more. It's just, it's, again, yeah. the close up of her. And that's that pink balloon up close. Yeah. And Brian, you always have such a gorgeous um, color palette that sort of uh, works with things that are more muted to things that are very vibrant. It's just such a beautiful, rich tapestry of color. Gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. I love like um, some of the busyness of the, look at the background behind us. That's the canvas I'm working on yeah, right yeah. now. So yeah. I love the busyness of it, but then I'll do pops of color yeah. on top of it to slow it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I love the the movement. That's the passages of color that I, I really love. And um, so all that com is combined. So in picture books, um, from page to page, you'll see a close up of a character on one page, but to make it pop, you, you turn the page, you'll see it and we see it in the background and something else comes forward. So it's always a push and pull mm -hmm. visual. Yeah, yeah. very important place. in picture books. You have to show different, you know. Yeah. But it's, each page has its own uh, visual on its own. It stands alone, but it's connected to the next or the one before, yeah. Yeah, and like in the book, um, you notice those um, shotgun, they're called, Shotgun houses. Oh, yes, yes. And that's the busyness that I'm talking about. But this, for me, the shotgun houses represent like a timeline of the past and then and the time coming forward. Like you have blues musicians like Ella Fitzgerald and, um, and, and Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. These are all yes. blues yes. artists that yes. set the temple and the back and the foundation of our our music, music. Um, in America, you know, and, uh, and across the world and the influence across the world. So all these little houses sort of contain, and then the African drummers, and then all the way in the back, you see nothing, but you'll see those pots made by Dave 200 years ago. So this, this is the timeline yes. that happens throughout the text. And there's a glossary in the back of the book, everybody, that shows um, all the people featured with more, um, a biography about each person so th that's always a good little um addition in a biography is that you can go to the back and see more and then do even more research because you'll get inspired <laughs> oh <laughs> like yes indeed it, it should be a kickoff point for you to think yeah. about other stories that are out there yeah absolutely. in a more elaborate way and then look at the, the shotgun house is big doing mm -hmm. this hip-hop scene here the creation of hip-hop in the parks yeah. with the kids and graffiti, yeah. And the graffiti on the trains. Yes. And there's a train that has grace. Yes. Remember that pink balloon? Yes, there it is. Is that her name? Grace. That was her name, Grace. Yeah. Tammy, the author's daughter, who didn't yeah. make it to the planet, didn't make it. But it's yeah. a celebration of her. She's still here. 
she's still a part of that's why the book is called we are here yeah. so um so it all plays into it because all genres of music you yeah. know uh, are involved stating that there's contributions that have been taking place so yeah moving through time so you never have to worry and it's done in, of course in, again in watercolor and collage and um and when we did this book it was right after it was during the pandemic, but right at the tail end of it. Yeah, 2020. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was actually making art for it, uh, or sketches or something, and it was important to put that in the book as well, because um, we were reflecting our world and what how we all sort of changed our rhythm and our movements to mm -hmm. accommodate what was going on to everyone, yeah. you know, with the mask and um, everybody contributed even our children. Yes. You know, so all that was important as well. Yes. Even the garbage collectors in the background and the um, delivery people that delivered food and the taxis and all those those ideas. And look at those um, those shotgun houses in the back. The timeline is still there. And look at Dave's pots still yeah. there as well. You know, so that's all a part of storytelling, even if you don't read it in the text. The, uh, the role of the artist or the illustrator is to expand the text, to yeah. tell a bigger, broader story and bring in to ideas into the story that's not necessarily depicted in the text. I'm not there to mimic the yeah. text. I'm, I'm here to expand the text. So that's what I try to do, expand the story and tell a bigger story visually yeah you're a master at it brian you, i just yeah. have a thank you so much i have such a wonderful time and actually i do have a question for you brian straight on oh. in what's your day like how do you work how many hours do you work and um oh. during the day after i drop my kids off to, to school I, i'm back here about um 9 15 yes. and i start um, um painting and, and cutting and collaging and I'll work all the way until about um, 1 30 when um, I have to go out to pick the kids up from school yeah and come back home then everybody my wife and everybody gets home from work and school and then we do you know family time dinner going into the evening and then I start again um, yeah. around seven o'clock um, p.m and I um, paint until midnight Oh yeah, so you're somewhat of a night owl as well. <laughs> yeah, well yeah. that's that's the strongest time for me because yeah. everything is quiet, quiet. and exactly. the ideas come out. Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, the ideas come out. Yeah, and I'd asked uh, Brian earlier um, where his studio was, and it is in his home. He's created a studio at home, so that makes it easier to have that schedule. You don't have to be somewhere no. else. You can be part of the house. The girls come in and take all these art materials and borrow. Yeah. <laughs> as as they should <laughs> yeah absolutely when they were younger they would wonder well how come you never go to work I'm like, are you kidding me <laughs> because my wife's a teacher so she leaves the house she gets in the car and goes to the school near here and goes to work <laughs> but i just come downstairs and i'm right here in my, You're this right, is my yes. work, you know yes let's work right at home um yeah. someone's asking um they really like the tops of the houses and how they went off the page. Was that oh. um, intentional or did you run out of room? <laughs> that, oh, oh, great question. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't bear to really cut the tops of them off. Right, right, right. You know, That's so, they look so, so I, great just, in real um, life. I just kept them up there. Yes, 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 yeah. And actually great question. a little bit to um, the participants about how that collage ends up being in a book because it obviously has to be photographed is that something you organize so that you have control of that or do you take it to the publisher and they take care of all of that oh well when, once i've finished the, the finished artwork um I, I take it to the publisher and they have their own photography area at the oh, yeah, publisher yeah. they do it all there they take it yeah they take care of it yeah 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 perfect and will your um your artwork's currently in a show, isn't it? Um Yeah, um you can, my work is in the um the R. Michelson Gallery in New, New um Hampton, Massachusetts. Northampton. 
Northampton, Northampton Massachusetts. Okay. I have worked there. And here's some, some exciting news. Um, it hasn't been confirmed yet, but we're working on it. I'm hoping to do an exhibit at Yale University mm -hmm. um, Gallery. So we're working on shows there. But you can see my work at the Society of Illustrators and yeah, at okay. um, our Michelson Gallery in Northampton. And Brian always has work in our original art show. <laughs> so look out if you couldn't. Yeah, I always, there next you've been year. a great friend. <laughs> so um, do you want to do a little bit of drawing? So our viewers who might have a oh. few materials want to draw a face or something. So inspired by um, We Are Here, just think about how, you know, obviously we're just giving you a taster, but you could work with your collage materials at another time, you're going to be inspired by how uh, Brian does his work. So you can use any materials you like. Perhaps you have markers or colored pencils. But the idea is to create um, a picture of somebody. It could be yourself or it could be a family member, it could even be a pet, whatever inspires you to do a portrait of this character. And then you cut it out and put it on a background. You see the pattern that um, Brian has even in his studio right there. That's That looks like a giant pattern that could be wallpaper, it could be a textile, um, but then he's gonna layer his collage on top of that. So this, this is the idea that you'll have from this. This will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel so you can revisit it. Um, I think collage is a very, very um, exciting material to use as an artist. Um, we in our show usually have a quarter of our illustrators will be working in some form of collage. Um, but as you'll see, if you get a chance to see the show, all kinds of materials are represented, represented, uh, including digital, uh, oil paint, acrylic paint, even um, black Prisma pencil. Uh, so it can be black and white as well. Just lots of different subjects, genres. Um, diversity of illustrators, diversity of book themes of people in the books, biographies, nonfiction, uh, fiction, comic arts, graphic novels. It's all uh, represented in 232 pieces of artwork, <laughs> of which Brian has two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, what I've been just, I just started sketching. Um, I remember we talked about the overhead. I started, can you see that? Uh, you might want to back up a tiny bit because we just got too close. So if you pull back, pull back, pull back. Yeah, now we can see. Yeah, that's good. All right. So uh, what I was doing is um, when I was, let's say I'm doing a character, I'll just start sketching ideas. And I, I, I sketch in circles. So everything's a circle. And then it, it turns into some kind of line or straight line, not straight line, but almost straight line. And mm -hmm. um, just to create the um, the actual character. So hold on. So I'll just do circles yeah, so You circles. can draw it and then you can hold it up and share it. Yeah. yeah. Good way to do it. And it's really fast and loose like this, you know. Um, fast and loose. And then we we start building upon it. It's always going to be layers. It's always for me. It always yeah. works as layers to me until we sort of get the right thing, the right gesture. Yes. And and once you know, once I have the sketch there, then when I start painting it, something else happens. Part of the line, I I'll lose the quality of the loose line. It'll be a tighter line. It'll be. And then when I cut it out, that's another line that happens. And you lose part, I personally lose part of the drawing line quality of that line because that X-Acto knife, and I'm using 300 pound watercolor paper, so that's the heavy paper. Yeah, you gotta really so, cut it. Yeah. So I gotta really cut it mm -hmm. in a way that I, I save as much as I can, but it won't be the, all the same as just that line drawing that you would, if I was to keep just the line drawing there, right. the yeah. silhouette would be slightly different. Do you have to then and, touch up a little bit or do you just prefer to have it organically be what it is? Uh, organically be what it is. Because yeah. that's the only way I can express to you that I'm human. You know, yeah. it can't be perfect. Yes. It has to be. That's what makes it so gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To just express it and mm -hmm. like, um, Let's say um, 
in the text, the the character has a certain kind of hairstyle and all, and I love head wraps and I love hair and big hair and all of that. And so I always try to do something <clears throat> with the hair as well, because as you know, well, I have daughters, you know, hair is. Oh, it's big. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's everything, you know. And there's so much they can do with their hair. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's a, it's a dilemma every morning here. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it has its own drama within itself. So I, I, I pay close attention to it and yeah. give it the respect that they give it, you know, yes. of course. My, I have a different take on hair, um, as you can see, but um, yours is easy to keep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you have a good hat collection, I hear. <laughs> exactly. There. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh, look how quickly Brian works. You'll have to maybe. It might be easier, Brian, if you want to um, hold it. Hold up. it up. Yeah, because yeah. then we'll see it more. Um, you know, like the right direction. Okay. So you can keep your um, screen where it is and then draw right. and hold it up. That's probably, yeah. So, yeah, wow. Look, very quickly sketched out, beautifully. And also placement. Think about how Brian had to place that so that there was room to do something with the head um, piece. So, you know, when you start drawing, place your faces sort of somewhere where you think you will have room to do more. That's yeah. another tip for the younger um, illustrated this morning. And also for the young artists, don't be necessarily confined with the um, the shape of the paper. Ah, yes. Because you can cut it out. Ah, yes, exactly. Yes, we create a whole like I did with these. You can yeah. cut them out. See. Yes. Yes. Wow. So good. And and create a whole different world around your character. Yeah. And let's say you're not happy with the shape of the head, the headdress. Mm -hmm. You can cut something else out and glue it on top. Glue it on. Yes, that's really brilliant. Yes, exactly. You could so try. You can it. always play with it. Yeah, it's like costuming, like um, having puppets or. Um, Absolutely, it's, it's really with... like this that thing. Yes. Yeah. It's like there used to be books that kids had that you could cut out and put different outfits on the different characters. Yes, yes, I love those books. Yeah, those exactly. Those type of books. So you're creating your own by doing your own collage. Absolutely. Yeah. And and you're not limited to paper. You're not limited. You could it could be leaves. Yes. Dry, you know, old dry fall leaves. Oh, they're wonderful. Yes. You can use them as patterns. You could put paint on them and create patterns on top of your work and then you can use the leaves itself as a collage. Yes. You know, so yeah, collect things around you, wrappers, yeah. And, yeah, nature, absolutely. Now, part of my process is, like, I collect old magazines. The local library here, every year when they when they change into the new year, the old magazines from the from the previous year, oh, they yeah. ask me if I yeah. want them. So they, they yeah. I go pick them up. And I just flip through old magazines, you know, fashion magazines and, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Architecture Digest, all the magazines, the latest magazines that are out. And I pick out patterns and different yeah. things that, that pop out at me. And then I use it in the artwork yeah, for but different you reasons. Painted yourself, right? Because it's yeah, not like you're, you don't really cut out, that you're using it for lots of inspiration to do your- Absolutely. Yeah. I use it for yeah, yeah. color inspiration as the palette for the work. All, all kinds yes. of reasons why I use it. But when you look at it, yeah. it looks like something else, but it's really, um, I just transformed it into something that is useful to the text, to the artwork that I'm trying to get to make, yeah. so. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, I was, yeah, another, another question is, you know, with your use of color palette, because you've been creating so many books, does it come very quickly and naturally to you the color palette that you kind of see for the book or do you um play around a bit with different um oh i play with it I, I i listen to the text the text gives me the kind of tone or attitude that it okay. has and i try to match it whether it be a brighter in your face um story or a subdued yes. story yes and sometimes yes. they have well in history it has an arc where it goes up and down and i I follow that as well. 
you know, mm-hmm. when yeah. it's, like when I did a book with Nikki Giovanni, it was called Rosa on Rosa Parks. From yeah, the okay. opening shot, there was a troubling sky. There was a stormy sky because that Let's was the speak. foreshadowing of what's coming. We're getting ready to go mm-hmm. through a storm visually mm-hmm. in the text. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's, so they're, they're the kind of prompts that I'm li- listening to in the text to sort of yeah. um, dictate what kind of palette yeah, um, great atmosphere, mood yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's very clearly uh, seen in your books. Um, I should know this, but have you ever authored a book? I have. I wrote my first first book was Uptown. Oh, you and, wrote that book, yes. yes yeah, which one? I wrote Uptown, yeah. and most recently yes. I did a book called um, 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 Rainbow. Um, what is it called? So Music is a rainbow. Music is a rainbow. Music is a rainbow. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna yeah. I, I I wrote that and I did a book with this, you know, um, newcomer. Um, his name is Mo Willems. We did. <laughs> oh gosh, we did well, a, he's from a way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did. Um, it's called Shoe Time. Oh. And he and I did a book, and that's the first time that Gerald and Piggy. We're in a book with a, a real character, a main character, which was my daughter. Oh, oh my gosh. And it was about shoes. It was too many oh, shoes. Too many shoes. Yeah. I mean, his style is so different from yours. That's an interesting Yeah, book. yeah. So we we converged and because we talked about doing um yeah. a book together ever since he got into books. And oh, we've been yeah. we we were friends from day one. Oh and we've yeah. been traveling and doing stuff together all all year, all these yeah, years. He's got a great humor. Yeah, it comes from yeah. a background of animation and everything, yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and you wonderful. know what? We were talking about librarians. Librarians love him as well, as I'm sure they love you. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and can I give you a little tidbit? Yeah. I started putting librarians in my books. Oh, you did? Honoring yeah. librarians. Yeah. That's awesome. There's oh. a few librarians in my books. A book called um, Between the Lines is about the life of Ernie Barnes, who's a professional football player and an artist. Mm-hmm. In that book, it's a librarian from Atlanta. She's in. Oh. A, I was in her classroom, and I was still working on a book. And oh. I said, okay, "I need a scene here." And I said, "Do you want to be in the book?" I said, and she said, "Yes." She's in the book. Oh and, my gosh! <laughs> and and then in Brooklyn, and, yes, and in Brooklyn, um, um, I did a book. Um, the librarian from the the Central Library in Brooklyn. She posed mm-hmm. for this book. Um, what was it called? Oh, it was um, the Langston Hughes poem. Um, oh my goodness. Um, I have so many books I can't remember. I know, exactly. Title. And I, I'm just, yeah, you do oh, have books. America. Um, all be- no, it's not all because of America. Um, we are the America. Oh. It's about America. Okay. And the Langston Hughes sure point. people know. Uh, sure, yeah, it'll come right to everyone's mind, including mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not American. Somebody but... out there said it, and it started right on the tip of their tongue. They just said it. And yeah. but it's, she's in as a librarian in that book. She's on the train riding the subway, and she appears in the book. I try to put like because I love teachers and librarians. Yeah, has your um, wife also been in the book? Yes, we've done books together. She's uh, written the book. I thought. Yeah. She- Yes, yes. So yeah, we did a book. Um, oh, again, um, on oh, this case, the title escapes me. So many books. <laughs> yeah, right, there's a lot yeah. of books to be researching. Uh, Brian has done, as you can see, uh, we've touched on a lot this morning, and I can't believe it's already come to an end, Brian. I, I mean, it's we could talk for more time. We, I actually said earlier, uh, before we started the workshop, that we could have a whole weekend with Brian. He has. Yes. You no, know, I love the books and I'm discovering more about you and all your books. Um, I, you know, I've been working at the Society of Illustrators for a few years now and I've admired your work. I featured you in a video last year, um, your work from the OA show. Huh. You know, it stands out to me every time I see it. And your the books themselves, the stories uh, are just incredible. You know, lots of nonfiction, but done in such a beautifully illustrated way that makes them almost not um, nonfiction, you know, it's that lovely collaboration of your imagination and storytelling through illustration and the beautiful words of the authors that you work with. Um, so thank you so, so much for joining oh. this morning. We had such a lovely little behind the scenes. Um, yes. It's amazing to see all of those original pieces. And thank you for reading the book. Um, 
and giving us all your insights. Uh, we really do hope to have you in person. I'm booking you next year. If you're in the city, look out. We're going to have an in-person collage making um, workshop with Brian and um, look out for more books that are being published as we speak, coming, launching this year. And what are you working on right now, Brian, as we finish up? I am working on uh, the third installment by Tammy Charles. Oh, yeah. We need to mention that. Yes, yes. tell again. Like the, the three. The first one was All Because You Matter. Yes. The second one was this one here, We Are Here. Yeah. And the third installment is called United Together. United Together. And, Wonderful. And, Yes. That's what I'm currently working on right now. Beautiful. So wonderful for both you and Tammy. What a great trilogy to have been part of. And I can't wait to I'm see so that it comes out. So take care. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, and happy new year. It's just still January. We just celebrated yep. Martin Luther King Day this week. Uh, check out books at your libraries. I always go to my library to check out more books and I am a big picture book collector. So I have, this is my own copy. I will have Brian sign it when I see him. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to. <laughs> so take care and joy. And again, we'll see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.